Hi, I'm Joe from JH Leather, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this bifold wallet with a handy coin pocket section. Let's get started. So as always, once you have purchased and downloaded your files, you're going to want to print them off. And I need to make sure they're set to 100% scale or actual size. Once they're all printed out, what you can do is roughly cut them out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reinforce them onto some card. Now this is going to make it so that they're a bit easier to use when you come to cutting out your leather patterns, but it also allows them to be reusable so you can make multiple wallets with the same patterns. So the card I'm using is just a standard stock card. Uh, you can use thicker cards should you want, but I find that this is fine to use for me in the workshop. And then once you have them all glued onto your reinforcement card, you can then accurately cut your patterns out. So now we've got our patterns cut out, we can transfer them onto our chosen leather. So all the information about the leather that I use and what thicknesses you need to use are in the information pack that comes with the patterns. So what I like to do is transfer them roughly onto my leather and then over cut these and then I will accurately cut them out once I have the leather cut down to a more manageable size. So now we have all our pieces cut out, what we're going to do is do a bit of edge treatment. So what I'm going to do as I'm going to be using edge paint for the edges of my leather is I'm actually going to crease them first. So I'm going to warm up my 1.5 millimeter creasing iron and then I'm going to crease the pieces of my wallet. When creasing thin leather I like to crease them on some card because it makes the crease line more noticeable. And now we've done that, we can put the first coat of our edge paint onto each of our components. So now we've got everything prepped up, what we're going to do is start by assembling the card slots. So we're going to take our two T slots and we're going to do some skiving along the bottom and on along the sides. Now you have these marked onto your pattern pieces and you can transfer them onto your T slots. So you've got a guide to follow. Now, if you wanted to, you can just make this wallet as a card slot only wallet by cutting out double of the card pocket components. Now we have those nicely skived. What we're going to do is using the locator guides on our pattern, we're going to mark that on to our backing piece. And now we've done that, we can glue the first of our T slots on to our backing. Now I am using contact adhesive for this and the one I like to use the most is Bostic 6092 but there are other sort of options available to you which will be perfectly fine for making this wallet. Now as we are using contact adhesive we need to make sure that we put glue on both areas that we want the component to stick to. And then once we've done that we can stick the first of our T-slots in place. 
taken the guide for our T-slot, we can then mark on where the stitching is going to be and then draw a line between these two dots. And then we're going to follow that by punching a stitch marker all the way through. Now, as we're not going to be seeing this for this section of the wallet, I'm using a five millimeter diamond iron. We're going to make sure that we punch that all the way through our leather. And now we've done that, we can then double hand stitch this in place. Once we've finished our stitching, we can trim the threads and then hammer that seam down. And then we're going to repeat this for the next card slot. Once we've got the second one on, what we're going to do is then glue on the front pocket. And then we can trim any excess leather. So now we've done that, we can now mark for our stitching. So we're going to grab the assembled card slots pattern. And we're going to mark that stitch line there. And then using a ruler, you can join those two dots together. And you can now follow that line with your chosen pricking iron. Now for this, I'm using my 3.38 millimeter iron because that's my favorite size. However, you can use any size iron that you have. And again, we are going to hit that all the way through because when we come to our stitching, we don't have to use an awl. So when we start our stitching, we are going to start with two back stitches because we're going to be finishing with one and a half back stitches and this way both ends are going to match. So as you can see here with my back stitch, I want that second stitch to either sit above or below, but not on top of the original stitch. So we're going to have two stitches side by side. Now I'll show you a bit of a closer look of that part once I have finished stitching this. And so as I said, we're going to finish with one and a half back stitches. And now this is what we want it to look like. So you can see the stitches are next to each other and not one on top of the other. Now we've done that, we can trim the threads. And now because I am using a linen thread, I cannot burn the ends. So I'm going to use some PVA glue and just pop that where I have trimmed the threads off. And then I'm going to tap the stitches down with a hammer. So hopefully your card pocket looks a little bit like this. And if you were doing card pockets only, you just need to make a pair. So one that is the opposite to this one. Now what we're gonna do is actually trim this down to size. So we're gonna follow the corners of the trimmed area as marked on the assembled card slot pattern. And once we've marked that on, we can then trim that down to size. What we're going to do now is do some edge finishing because this is going to be inside of the wallet. It's going to be awkward to get to. So we're going to do at least two layers of edge paint on this and we will also recrease it. Once that's drying, we can then move on and start doing our coin pocket section. So we're going to start by marking out where our snap closure is going to fit. And then choosing the appropriate size hole to punch with a rotary hole punch or a circular hole cutter. 
And now we've done that, we can now fit the poppers in place. And now I have gone ahead and used a covered popper. And if you want to learn how to do that, I will link a video in the description as well as in a card at the top of the screen for you to follow. What's not shown in that is how to actually fill the poppers themselves. So what you need to do is with a circular hole punch, you just need to punch a hole in your chosen leather, the size that will fit your poppers. Now for mine, that was a 10 millimeter and a six millimeter circular punch. And I have just glued them in with contact adhesive. Now we've done that, we can use a paring knife and we're gonna scythe down the bottom of our gussets down to nothing. Now the area for this is marked on your patterns and you can transfer that to your gussets. Once we've done that, we can now glue the two gussets on to the front of our pocket. And once they're attached, we can then mark for the stitching. Now this stitch line is set at three millimeters. So once you've marked your holes on, you can then set your dividers to three millimeters and draw a line along here. And then we're gonna follow that with our stitching iron. And we're gonna punch this all the way through. And once we've done that, we can then stitch these two little gussets in place. And again, trimming the ends and tapping them down with a hammer. We're now gonna mark on the stitching and skiving guide onto our to the lid of our pocket. And we're gonna draw a line between the two dots with our ruler. And then we're gonna skive this area down to nothing on the grain side of our piece. Once we've done that, we can then mark onto our backing where the lid needs to sit and draw a line between these two dots. And then we can use some contact adhesive on both the lid and the backing and glue our lid in place. So once the lid is attached, we can use the guide again and we're going to mark where we need to stitch to and then draw a line between these two dots. And then using our chosen stitch marker, we're gonna stitch mark this all the way through and stitch this onto our backing. Once we've done that, we can then mark on where the coin pocket front is going to attach to. And again, draw a line between these two points. And this is just a nice guide for us when we come to put our glue on, which is gonna be the next step when we attach the two gussets onto the backing. And now we're not gonna glue across the bottom because we want to stitch our gussets on first and it's easier to do this whilst the bottom of the pocket is not attached. We're gonna make sure those gussets line up with that line that we have drawn on. And we're gonna stick both of them on at the same time. Now that is attached, we're gonna use our dividers and once again, draw a line three millimeters in from the edge. And using our stitch marker, stitch mark all the way through along that line. And then we're gonna stitch these two gussets onto the backing, starting with two back stitches and finishing with one and a half. Now that is attached, what we can do is actually glue the front of this pocket down And we're now ready to start assembling the internal part of our wallet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold on the card slot section. We're gonna mark roughly where that finishes to, and then we can glue up to that mark. And then we can glue that into our wallet. And then we're gonna do the same with the coin pocket. 
Now they are attached, what we're going to do is mark the stitch line on the top of both of our pieces. And again, this is set to three millimeters. So once you've marked the dot, you can then use your dividers and draw that line in. And then follow that line with your stitch marker, punching all the way through. And then double hand stitching, starting with two back stitches and finishing with one and a half back stitches. So once we have finished hand stitching our pockets in, what we're going to do is tap that stitching seam with a hammer and then we're going to redo some edge painting on this bit. And whilst that is drying, we can move on to the external wallet. So to start with it, we're going to put that reinforcing strip in. So we're going to use the pattern and mark that on to our backing and draw a line across. And then once we've got that marked in, we can then glue both the wallet and the reinforcement strip and attach them in. Once that's glued in, we can then mark the stitching for this area. And again, using our dividers at three millimeters, draw a line between the two dots and then follow this line with our chosen stitch marker, punching all the way through. And then stitching this onto the wallet before tapping the seam down and trimming off any excess. So once we've done trimming, what we're going to do is using a paring knife or a skiver knife, trim the bottom corners of that reinforcement strip, because when it comes to stitching the front of our wallet in, there will be a bump there if we haven't skived this. We can now offer up the internal part of our wallet and mark where the card slots finish. And then we can glue up to that line and glue along the two sides that are going to be stuck into the wallet and stick this in place. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use our dividers at three millimeters and we're going to mark across the bottom and up the side of the card slots. And we're going to do this one side at a time. So we're going to start with the card slots and we're going to stitch them in. And then once we've done that, we will then do the same on the coin pocket side. So once we have marked our stitching line, we can punch our stitch marker all the way through. And then we're going to double hand stitch this, starting with two back stitches. And that includes one over the edge of our wallet. And that's just going to hold all those three layers together. Once we've finished stitching the first side, what we can do is then glue in the coin pocket side of the wallet. And once that's stuck down, we can use our dividers and draw our stitch line and then follow that with our stitch marker and stitch that into place. Once we've finished stitching, we can use some PVA glue on the ends of our threads. And then using a hammer, tap the seams down. And now we're going to do some finishing touches. So we're going to use some sandpaper and we're going to get the edges of our wallet nice and smooth and level. And then we're going to do some creasing because I'm using edge paint. I need to make sure that I do my creasing before I add the paint. And once we're happy, we can then start doing some edge painting. Now this may take a few layers to build up to get a really nice finish. And you may have to do some sanding in between, but you will get a nice finished edge using this method. Once we are happy with the edge finishing of our wallet, we can use a bone folder and just remove any excess glue that there may be from where we attach the components to our wallet.
So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and if you did, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials and I shall see you in the next video.